Hello there, YouTube. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve coming back for episode 8 of our current Let's Play. Hanging out here outside of our raccoon exhibit. They seem to still all be getting along. And everything is great here. And so we're going to go ahead and move on to our next area, which is going to be right around here. Now, I mentioned last time that I kind of wanted to do a couple smaller exhibits, so I'm still going to continue with that. But a couple people in the comments of my last video suggested that maybe I should change this into a sort of uh, forest area. Or at least a North American forest area. So I think maybe that's what we're going to do. Um, you can see now I've already got the skunk selected, so I'm going to use the skunk in our next exhibit. And then I'm going to kind of make the main attraction in this area be a... Uh, I think I'm going to go with a, either a black bear or a brown bear. I'm not sure because... Uh, Again, a couple different people suggested that, so that'll be like the main thing towards the back of the exhibit, but right now I'm going to go with the skunk, uh, just to keep up with the smaller displays, which I mentioned last time I really like doing, so I'm just kind of, kind of define an area here. Uh, what kind of fencing should we use in our skunks? I want you to be able to get right next to it, so it's got to be something that the skunks can handle, that you can see over and... Yeah, maybe this slow stone. I like the look of this fence, so we'll give this a shot here. Mm-hmm. And right along the path here. I'm going to keep the paths one wide in this area, just so it's more like a kind of an intimate forest trail. Uh, and speaking of, one of the reasons I wanted to do skunk was because they have these really cool shelters, which look like a full tree. Um, which comes in the European Expedition Track, but I think it's going to look a really good uh, entrance to our forest area if we have this kind of bigger than average tree here, which we can also use effectively in the exhibit, so that's going to be the main inspiration for this area. Um, okay, well, well, let's just focus on getting I had an idea, and maybe I'll do it, but um, for now we're just going to finish on the skunk. So I'll put my trusty hollow log with food, in this case some apples. And yeah, okay, I know what I'm I, I thought I had, I'm going to do it. I'm going to basically uh, connect this display with another one. Um, and I'm going to do that by putting a little like house in between for our zookeepers. So we'll inset this here. I don't want the pathway that the guests are on to go right up against the house, so we will bring the low stone fence in here. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And get rid of that there. Good, good, good. And seal it off except for one square there. And now we'll just sort of build out our innkeeper, or innkeeper, the zookeeper house here. Um, nope, not against the path. Come on back. In fact, let me pause the game here because people are walking through the display and that's already making me upset. So, okay. Grab this just chain link fence. Like that. Okay. Put one here, because there's going to be another exhibit on like the north side. Or I guess it's, if I oriented myself to the front of the zoo, it would be the, let's see, the skunks would be on the west side and the other animal would be on the east side. So we'll make some entrances here so our zookeepers can actually get in. Um, yep, yeah, like that, I think. That's good. And we'll put down a pathway for zookeepers eventually. Just like that. Okay. So now let's get back to the skunks. And the rest of their food. Uh, I've got the apples outside here, so I'm probably going to put the other things they need, like a water dish and some meat. They are omnivores, so put the meat and everything inside the zookeeper area. Right there. And there's the water dish, yes. 
and just make sure that's not in the same hitbox as the meat so we don't have any problems there. Beautiful. And let's just go ahead and paint over this dunk area. Make sure I get it. Okay. Got it all there and put in. Huh. Well, the monkey bars. They don't make much sense for the skunk. But. Now that I think about it, if I move them back here and maybe sink them into our raccoon exhibit around the pond here. So we'll go back and make a last second adjustment. Yeah, okay, that's good. And we'll just put down some toy balls here for our skunk friends. That's interesting. I wonder why they didn't come up in the raccoon suggested things. Oh well, we'll move on here. Um, pick up some grass. This is that same grass I used way back in episode one. But uh, I think it'll fill in good here. Let's just bunch up the area. Do, 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 do. Well, my dogs are barking in the background. Uh, if you can, if that's even being picked up, I apologize. They're just apparently chasing some pelicans off the lawn. <laughs> but we'll go on here with the red top grass, which is something I really like. And you'll notice here, um, I'm doing my usual things where I put like uh, the plants around the edges of the display and everything. But I'm also doing it around the actual uh, shelter here because well, I do like the big tree and I like that it's a practical and it's a good uh, like the first thing you see going into this area of the zoo it is a little on the fake side so if you put some things around it I think it'll be better and drop in some small grassland rocks I don't mind that um, the animal shelters look a little more artificial than like real trees uh, I know that bothers some people but I think it just makes it look more like a zoo because, you know, a lot of times you will see that in actual zoos where it will be uh, like something that's very clearly uh, man-made or manufactured trying to simulate what they actually stay in. Uh, and it's one of those things where it only has to be, in reality, uh, close enough to the real thing in order to fool the animals. So, uh, since zoos can kind of take that shortcut, I don't feel bad uh, taking that shortcut here in Zoo Tycoon 2, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I think that's enough. We've got some nice grassy areas. Maybe flesh that out a little bit more. Fill in this area back here. Um, give it a little survey. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fine. Um, since that's kind of an open area over there, let's throw in one of these scratching posts right there. Since there's, there's plenty of room for it, I don't see why not. And okay, so we're actually going to put our skunks in. Just put in a nice breeding pair here. Uh, I think the skunks are remodeled versions of. I think they're remodeled of the ratel. It looks like just judging on their icon. So uh, I'm not going to put more than one male and one female. Uh, I'd probably put in more females, but uh, if you put in multiple male ratels, sometimes they fight. And I'm not sure if the skunks still do that or not. They may have been tweaked, but. Uh, it's a smaller exhibit anyway, so I don't need to overcram that with animals, and I'm not going to risk them fighting with each other. Okay. Um, now I'm thinking you're not going to be able to see that well over this little stone wall fence, or at least you'll have to be right up near it. So I'm thinking maybe put in a viewing area. Well, I guess it, I can't put it right. Oh, I could, but I had to delete the fence. Let me see. Maybe move it here as the start of it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be, I mean, I could delete that fence real quick and fix it. Uh, no, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Um, doo -doo -doo. all right, let's just wrap the path around there and 
Let's see. Unpause it. Make sure. Well, let's let's actually take a look. I guess is the best way to determine this. Are you gonna be able? Okay, yeah, you can see it right from here, and I'm not right up against the fence. Uh, I should probably put down a warning sign telling people not to uh, bother the animals because they're gonna be able to reach over that. But uh, that's fine. I might put a little interior fence if that's the case, uh, or maybe like a little waterway just to keep the skunks right off. But I think most people aren't going to have a problem with that. And now I'm going to just go ahead and tweak the ground a little bit. I'm going to raise up that tree like I just did. Again, I just want that to be like sort of the first thing you're going to see coming into our little Woodlands of North America exhibit. And smooth that out like that. And let's drop down and take a look at it now. So we're going to like, here's where you first enter, and yeah, you'll be able to see that pretty clearly. And you can see the skunks, at least when they're on the hilltops, probably when they're down there. Uh, okay. So that's going to work real well. So there we go, we got a skunk display. Um, and we did that pretty quick. It only took me ooh, about 10-15 minutes. Um, so... Let's go ahead and drop the second skunk in make sure they're all happy and since I'm doing so well on time let's take a little while to play with some trees I think uh, no that doesn't look good um, English oak I don't really want to use anything that's not a native to American plant in this exhibit but these trembling aspen trees we had some of those in the farmland area so yeah I'll still use them here I don't feel bad about repeating that and just make this area look a little more interesting. I want to put in enough plants that it looks like a real area, but obviously not enough to block the view. So I think that's going to work fine. So now the question is, um, what do we do with the, what do we turn on east side of the fence here? Well, I guess let's go ahead and block this area out. I'll use okay and uh, this little square here I put it in is just sort of a uh, zookeeper entrance just to stop our guests from walking right into it and we'll extend the zookeeper path here and I'll throw down a employees only sign in front of that too Mm hmm Okay. So, um, hmm. Hmm, I say hmm. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and finish off the house, because I want the, uh, house to be symmetrical and figure out what the borders of this fence are going to be. So I'll have this going straight out so it matches the other side, but I don't want to completely copy the pattern here, so I'm just going to kind of just sort of loosely associate. Uh, I don't want to go too far that way because I think I can fit a little aviary there to the left hand side. Um, so go like this. Yes, zoom out. And right now, uh, really the only thing I'm thinking about is, uh, you know, make it big enough that an animal can be in there and be happy, uh, that it kind of comes to the same termination point, but you also just don't want to make a perfect square because that's just really boring to look at. Um, where does this need to be exactly? It needs to be out here. No, not like that. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, I had a mental breakdown there. I couldn't figure out exactly where I wanted it. It should be like that. Okay. And now we'll grab the 3 to 2 height side to connect the little housing uh, zookeeper shelter area. Other way. There we go can be beautiful. And again, we're just going to close up the area to make it a little more private for our animals and so you can't obviously see the uh, zookeeper area. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's, it's sort of mere entrances. Uh, it sort of mirrors the skunk area in that the uh, 
part that projects out furthest is on the right hand side in the back area and the part that projects out furthest is on the left hand side of the front area. So they're not perfect mirrors but there's kind of a symmetry there. Then we'll go ahead and grab a zookeeper, Mr. Keeper Sealy. Sealy? I guess Sealy? Whatever. I'll give him the assignments. He can take care of both these animals since they go through the same area. And they are pretty small exhibits. Uh, now the question is, which animal am I going to put in here? Um, I want to keep it a forest animal. I want to keep it North America. Uh, something that sort of goes with the skunk. So, hmm. Not really sure. Uh, well, here, let's see. The skunk was temperate grassland. Is there anything good that fits in with that? So that we can kind of keep up the mirror displays. Um, hmm. No, nothing really. I mean, it doesn't have to be temperate grassland because the raccoons weren't, but, um, what's that? That's a guinea pig. No, I'm not going to put guinea pigs there. That's South America. Um, what about the red fox? Now, I know it came with the European Expedition Packs, but I'm pretty sure that's the same sort of standard fox. You know what, let's check this. Um, the red fox, Vulpus vulpus, is a member of the order Carnivora. It is in British Isles, where there are no longer any native wild canids. It is simply referred to as the fox. It has the widest range of energy terrestrial carnivore, being native to, oh, there we go, Canada, Alaska, and almost all the contiguous United States. So yes, you could go tromping around the North American forest and find the Vulpus vulpus. So you are going to be on the back side of my skunk display here. And those ones are a little too big. I'm going to take the small rock cave. Uh, yeah, it's a little artificial looking, but like I said with the uh, hollow tree, that doesn't really bother me that much. So we'll go ahead and just fill this in with dirt then. Which for some reason slightly raises the ground and made the uh, cave wiggle there. And I think we'll follow the same procedure of putting the animals food inside and right there and a water dish like right um, yeah right there's fine and since he's from the European expeditions I'm also gonna put in these chicks just to make sure he's got something he can eat because I'm pretty sure his coating will work with any of those but uh, just as a double check, I'll put it in there. Uh, oh, here's something fun. Let's put it in one of these post rooms. Because I do know they play with these. I've actually already made a... Uh, if you go back to my earlier videos, there is a Red Fox exhibit tutorial that I thought came out really good. If you're looking for other ideas to do with your Red Fox from the European Expedition Packs, I would recommend that. But uh, here's an alternative for you. And we'll just build up this area with some rocks just to uh, not only add character to the display, but again, kind of camouflage the artificiality of that shelter. And we'll use the same plant life as we use in the skunks. I wonder if putting that big patch of grass in the front was a good thing, because it might block your view too much. But I'll take a look at that when we get down. And some red top grass. And some of these stingy needles. Or I guess nettle might be the correct pronunciation, since it is, again, from the European expansion. Uh, <laughs> Just zoom in here and put these right at the entrance here. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm liking that a lot. Uh, let's put in a little pond though, because I've got got the. Uh, fairly wide area there in the middle that's kind of empty. So we'll put in a little pond there. Uh, okay. 
It's probably a little bit bigger than I want it. Uh, let's make sure they can easily walk to their shelter. Something like that. Gonna be fine. Like there. And let's just take a second and we'll delete the plants that fell into the water there. And vary the terrain up a little bit. A little hill here. Probably going to smooth that one out because it's a little high. That's fine. Like there. Okay. And anywhere else that could use a hill? Probably in the back right hand corner there. Like that. Mm hmm. And trees. Anything good? That magnolia tree is alright. English oak. No, I think I'll stick with those trembling aspens. And I don't want you, like, your trunk going into the rock, so let's get you as close as I can here. Good. And this very leafy, grassy, flowery area, and one behind the shelter. Maybe one up front, or no. We'll just keep that going. Because ideally, if you're walking down the path in that area, I want you looking still at the raccoons and not the foxes. So we'll just go ahead and block that area off with trees and the shelter. Okay. Speaking of the pathway, let's figure out exactly how it'll go. So basically my idea is, I probably won't do it this time, but next time I'll put in an aviary of some type. Uh, a couple of people mentioned eagles, I'm not sure that's big enough for bald eagles, but uh, on the south side of the screen that's like just to the right of the raccoon display, we'll go ahead and put some eagles in there. Do I want to extend this path a little bit? Just to make it a little more interesting. Something like that. Or, uh, see, I was thinking maybe I wanted to put like a, a couple benches back there, but I don't like how it looked, so I'm going to go back to what we had before. And we'll just fill in this area behind these little post fences with some plant life, or a statue or something, probably just plants. So let's go ahead and see. What kind of trees do I have? European or no? Orange trees. I don't want to put the trembling aspens there because that would look too uniform if that was the only type of tree I was putting out in this part. Um, since we are doing a forested area, let's see if we can't find some forest trees. Uh, it's more, it's a better trembling aspen really, but uh, beach. I wonder about this elder tree. It's again, it's a European expansion, but I also like the look and I like the fact that. Well, let's make sure there's nothing better here. Uh, I was going to say I like the fact that it kind of juts out so I could have it overhanging the path, but maybe there's a better tree that will match up to that. Um, tropical dry forest. Sacred. Whoa! Well, that tree would cover everything. So, nope, not going to do you. Um, any other biomes that would fit what we're trying to do here. I don't think I want to do a boreal forest, do I? Pine bush is not bad, it's just not good for that area. Maybe a big old... No, I'm not going to use that because it cuts too much into the display and that would bother me for some reason. Um, one last quick look. I think, I think we're going to probably end up using those elder trees. Um, no, not the Brazilian red pepper. No, no. Yeah, I think we'll just use these elder trees here. And just turn them around here so the part that overhangs goes over the path. No, not like that. Like that, yes. And another one on the other side. Uh, 
Okay, and just for a second, whoops, not the, uh, I don't want to get rid of the fences, I want to make the trees disappear for a second, because I want to put the roof on of our keeper area here. And we'll just use the same roof we put on the raccoon shelter. Just keep it nice and uniform. I think this was the exact same roof I was using at the beginning, too, so it'll fit in really nice and well with our zoo. By the beginning, I mean back in episode one, where we're doing our peafowl and uh, eastern wild turkeys. Go ahead and cover this up. I got some positive feedback last time. I mentioned that uh, I wasn't going to do cuts anymore when I was putting on roofs or like setting down plants, and um, I didn't get much chatter on it. But uh, one of the uh, people who comments frequently on my videos mentioned that they preferred the longer ones, and I kind of do too. So. That's why you're watching me put up the roofs this time. I just think it's a little more smooth, and it really doesn't save us that much time, I came to realize, so. There we go. And trees back in. And I guess we'll eventually have to put our foxes in our fox displays. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it just one male, one female, because it is still a smaller display. And just drag our path around here so I kind of have an idea of what we're looking at. You know, I didn't do too that bad. It's only about a little over 25 minutes in if my clock is set right. So I'm also going to take some time here and kind of not just tweak these displays, but also tweak the area to kind of make this its own separate part of the zoo. So let's go back to the front here. And we'll wrap that around. And where is our stone path that I was using? Now, here it is. Do it like that. Okay, so let's send it here to get a more match. Well, Alright, so let's go ahead and just sort of decorate the area too. Uh, take a look here at the guest level. You see, you can see our skunks even from the outside. Uh, I do like that tree right there. Uh, not only does it make a good entrance to the area, uh, it provides shelter for our skunks, but it also blocks out um, like the area where you would look directly into the place where the zookeepers attend the skunks, so that helps a little bit. You don't want to make those places too obvious, because otherwise it looks really bad. Uh, yeah, those uh, monkey bars look pretty good inside the raccoon display. I'm glad I remembered that existed when I pulled them up. And you know, I, I really like that. Let me grab a picture right here. Okay. And that's a keeper. I like how uh, that fox looked on that hill with the uh, different types of grasses in the foreground. So there will be a little aviary. I maybe do like a, an owl or, like I said, some people are suggesting eagles. Kind of small for eagles. Maybe if I only have one member of the... Or at least just one eagle, that'll be fine, I think. And let me grab some donation boxes, something that I've not been doing so far, but put one for all three of the displays here. There's our raccoon one. Let's put one up front here in sort of this cut-in area for our skunks. And then, of course, our foxes will need one, too. I noticed our zookeeper is on the complete wrong side. She might need help getting in. <laughs> but, uh... The AI is just not great in this game, so pathfinding, sometimes zookeepers get stupid. So, any... Nah, I'm not probably going to statue the place up, but I probably should put in some benches. Um, people haven't had a chance to sit since Farmville. Oh, before I forget, I did say I would drop a staff-only sign right here. Mm -hmm. And let me take some of that red top grass and we'll kind of just plant up this area here that's left kind of bare. Do -do -do -do. 
And so I'll drop some red top grasses, and then I'm just going to take some of that regular grass, what has the flowers pop up in it from time to time, and just fill in the rest of the area here. And same thing on the other side. There we go, just like that. And we'll rotate around here. Don't want to... No, no, I'm fine with the animals. Let me just go ahead and start to... Let me switch here to build mode and start grabbing some... Benches, there we go. And okay, uh, let me extend this area out so there is like a seating area up front here. I think I can still leave it one removed from the main path like that. No, I'm not gonna. There's not enough room there to cut out an area to put in like a tree or anything. So I'm just gonna grab the benches. Put them down here. And I think I'm going to put a... Well, let's put a forest lamp post next to it, since it is a forest area. I think I want an archway. Yeah. Oop, I just saw it a second ago. Where did I put it? There it is. I think I want a forest arch to mark the entrance to our forest area. Because I have a really good fencing that's going to go with that. And uh, I can use that fencing then to kind of mark out just the... Well, I guess we call the other area farmland. We'll call this area forest land. Although it's... Hmm, I don't like that that's not even. Let me give that a think, and, uh, okay, yeah, there's a fence that goes really good with it. And this will define the outline of forest land, and then, like, all that grass area in between, I'll eventually end up putting in some trees and plants and maybe some rocks and uh, maybe some statues just to make it look a little unique, like its own area. And they'll make that as far back as farmland goes. Uh, let me just grab some of these elders and sort of... I don't like the way that looks. Just something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll go back and do this. I might even do it off camera. Just kind of put down plants and areas like that. But uh, just something to keep this area of the zoo unique looking and give it kind of that foresty feel. Uh, I don't really have a theme for this zoo. You've probably noticed that I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. Uh, usually I do prefer to have like a set theme like this is a forest zoo or this is a particular biome or particular part of the world. But uh, I, I'm, this one I just kind of doing free form uh, partially because I do like doing it kind of as a tutorial thing so I wanted to give variety in it. And um, partially because, um, you know, there are a lot of zoos like that. My local zoo is like that, where there's, like, no set theme. It's just whatever animals they happen to be able to get, because it is a smaller zoo. But, uh, yeah, I do like that fencing uh, going around the area here. Um, hmm. I don't like the fact that those torches aren't exactly even. Uh, so let's do a quick alteration to the path here. Take it in like that and just move you over to here. And that's going to prompt me, since there's more area here now, I'm going to put down another bench for it. There we go. Okay, I think that's all we're going to do in this video. Let's take our usual look around. Um, like I said, this area here is probably where we're going to start our next 
video. Uh, probably going to be an aviary because that's kind of a small area and that's probably going to fit our birds better. But uh, if you have any other plans or you have better ideas, please let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe this video. I'm always really, uh, <laughs> I'm always ready and waiting to hear from you, uh, waiting for ideas. Uh, other than that, you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.